With the thought of that volcano, where hot lava flows out, you might be thinking, how hot Earth must be inside? This heat could move continents, build mountains, and may cause volcanic earthquakes. But the big question is, where does the heat inside of planet Earth come from? There are two known sources of heat of our planet Earth, namely, the primordial heat and radiogenic heat. Have you encountered the word primordial? Correct! It means first created or developed. Thus, primordial heat is the heat energy in the Earth's interior that is left over from the heating of the planet during its early formation. 
The major contribution of this internal heat is the accretional energy. This is the energy deposited during the early formation of a planet. Where do you think primordial heat is originated? Exactly! The Earth's core is a storage of primordial heat that originates from times of accretion of Earth. An analogy would simplify this idea. If you hit a hammer on a hard surface several times, what do you think would happen? Correct! The metal in the hammer will heat up, right? Kinetic energy here is then transformed into heat energy. This primordial heat is constantly lost to the outer silicate layers of the mantle and crust of the earth through conduction and convection, which will be discussed in a short while. The second source of heat in our planet is the radiogenic heat. This is the heat generated by the decay of radioactive isotopes of the elements. Radioactive decay is the process in which an unstable atomic nucleus loses energy by radiation. By the way, what is an isotope? Isotopes are atoms from the same element whose nuclei have a different number of neutrons and therefore differ in mass. The key point is that radioactive decay of isotopes in the mantle and crust is a continuing source of heat. An example is uranium, which is a special kind of element, because when it decays, radiogenic heat is produced. Radioactive elements exist everywhere on the Earth in a fairly significant concentration. Without the process of radioactive decay, there would be fewer volcanoes and earthquakes and less formation of the Earth's vast mountain ranges. Now, let us briefly discuss the methods of heat transfer mentioned earlier. Conduction is the transfer of heat between substances that are in direct contact with each other. This is the process by which heat energy is transmitted through collisions between neighboring atoms or molecules. Heat from the Earth's core and radiation from the Sun is transferred to the surface of the Earth by conduction. Convection, on the other hand, is a transfer of heat related to the movement that occurs within a fluid due to rising of hotter materials paired with the sinking of colder materials. This occurs because hotter materials have less density than colder ones. This happens at the mantle, but never in between the core and mantle. The mantle behaves as a viscous fluid due to high temperatures. In the convection current, the mantle of the earth moves slowly because of the transfer of heat from the interior of the Earth up to the surface. This results to the movement of tectonic plates. Did you know that the heat of the core takes tens of thousands of years to reach the surface of the Earth? The Earth's surface cools from the outside, but the core is still made of extremely hot material. Now, we have reached the end of our journey today. Let us recap what we have learned. We have discussed the two sources of heat in our planet Earth, namely the primordial and the radiogenic heat. 
primordial heat is a heat energy in the Earth's interior that is left over from the heating of the planet during its formation. Radiogenic heat, on the other hand, is a heat generated from the decay of radioactive isotopes of the elements. We also mentioned the process of convection and conduction that takes place in the Earth's mantle and crust. Now, it's time to assess your understanding of today's lesson. Prepare a ball pen and a piece of paper to answer the following questions. I will repeat each question twice and you will be given five seconds to answer each question. Ready? Let's begin. Number one. What are the two primary sources of the Earth's internal heat? Again, what are the two primary sources of the Earth's internal heat? Number two, what do you call the energy deposited during the early formation of a planet? Again, what do you call the energy deposited during the early formation of a planet? Number three, true or false, conduction is a process by which heat energy is transmitted through collisions between neighboring atoms or molecules. Again, true or false, conduction is the process by which heat energy is transmitted through collisions between neighboring atoms or molecules. Number four, true or false? Without the process of radioactive decay, there would be fewer volcanoes and earthquakes. Again, true or false? Without the process of radioactive decay, there would be fewer volcanoes and earthquakes. Number five, true or false? The heat of the core takes hundreds of years to reach the surface of the Earth. Again, true or false? The heat of the core takes hundreds of years to reach the surface of the Earth. Okay, time's up! Congratulations! Now we are finally done with a short quiz. Please submit your papers to your respective subject teacher via messenger, email, or submission on your next module distribution. And that ends our lesson for today. I hope you have learned a lot in this session. Again, I am teacher Gisela Skinas of Moog Senior High School, Division of the Samis Oriental. Tune in for another learning episode next time. Bye!